talking since about June 4th when Cheryl released this. I'm curious before we get started as to if anybody has used this tool yet. So if you have, raise your hand and I want to see how many experts we have in the audience. Do you have to be an expert to raise your hand? I know that question is going to come across my board <laughs> oh, immediately. <laughs> if you've used it, raise your hand. I see a few coming up. Annie has used it. Is that it? Hand is on your Citrix toolbar on the very left side on the part that pops out. Looks like a little yellow glove. Fingers up, you voted yes. Fingers down, you have voted no. I'm just seeing one hand. All right. Not two, but it went down and I couldn't catch to see who it was. So okay. All it right. appears you are the wizard in the room. Okay. Well. That's awesome. Let's get started here. We don't have too much time together, so I want to get started right away. First, let's talk a little bit about where we're going to go today. We're going to show you some of the paths to find this formatting tool. Um, there's about three different paths you can take. We'll share those. We're going to get some ideas on how to use the tool, some examples of email types you might use, or ways that you don't or you can't use this email tool. And then we're going to spend some time actually doing some show and tell. We're going to create a HTML message together. And then I'm going to show some options of where you could send these emails through your student manager. We'll wrap that up then and give you some of the important reminders and see what questions you might have. So let's get started here. Where to find the formatting tool? There are several locations. The first is right from your aceware.com page. And I'm going to bring that screen up for you so you can see exactly where that is. Am I you still with me, Lori? We are, and your screen okay. is uh, refreshing nicely. OK, good. From your aceware.com site, in your favorite customer toolbar there, you're going to find the link to this tool as a student manager resource. So clicking on that link will bring up the resources you have for student manager. And over here on the right, you have the link to the tool to create your HTML email. So that's one path to take there. Another path for you. And that is, Lori has that shown here. Another path is just yesterday, Matthew released another version of Student Manager that has this um, tool right in Student Manager. So I'm going to show you here if what you'll need is 8.0.025 in order to find that HTML tool right in your help menu. So that is very convenient, and like I said, that was just released yesterday. Your other option then, of course, I'm going to get back to the screen here, is from the website. Now, both of those links I just showed you from aceware.com and the student manager link in the help menu will take you to this website. But I like to, I have enjoyed this so much that you're going to notice on my toolbar in my browser, I've created a shortcut there. So I keep this open all the time. I use it so much that I have bookmarked it and I have placed it in my bookmarks toolbar so that I have access to that anytime I want. So those are the locations that you can find this nifty tool that Cheryl has created for us. All right. Let's get back to the PowerPoint here. Sorry, I am stumbling to find my actual screen. Here we go. The best use of the HTML tool. There are several ways that this is going to be really beneficial to you. Think about promotional emails. I hope that all of you have received the promotional email that we've been sending out frequently. See if this looks familiar to you. Our Christmas in July special. If you received that email, then this, that email was created with this tool. 
So if you had a special promotion going on or you have special um, things that you want everybody in your system to know about, this would be an excellent tool for that. The other a good beneficial use of this would be think about at the ACEWARE conference. Right before you come to conference, about two weeks before you're heading out, we're sending a lot of detailed information and to remind our attendees of what the weather is going to be like, a reminder of the transportation, all of those emails. This would be a good use of that if you had a large event or a class that had some real specific instructions you wanted to send. You could fancy that up a little bit and put this in the email tool and send that out. You could also, if you wanted to um, send messages to everybody in your system to talk about a new staff member or perhaps a change in location for your for your department or if you had a special speaker, um, this would be a good place for that too. What we have to share is that what this can't be used for is if you were wanting to merge data that's within your student manager database. If you were trying to merge uh, locations and times and that type of thing, this isn't the tool for that. We have tools within student manager to send some of those student reminders or emergency messages, those are already in there and those are very quick um, emails you want to get out really fast. This would not be the tool that you'd want to use for that. So, Lori, am I getting any questions yet or are we doing okay and we can start building a message? I think you can go right on ahead and build a message. Okay. All right, we're going to do some show and tell now. You have the option in your tool here. If you, you know, want to, you could create your message just right here and you could type and create your message here. However, it's also fabulous because you can create your message in your Word doc. And I've got a message here I've already started because a lot of times when you're creating these announcements or like conference reminders, these are documents you might want to save so that the next time you use that it's just a matter of you know, reinserting dates or, or links and things. So you want to keep this message around. So what I've done and what I like to do is just do this in Word where I'm a little bit more comfortable and I can see, see the um, information clearly and I can create that and do all of my editing and spell check right within the Word doc and then I can take this message and put it right into this tool. You'll notice that Cheryl has very specific instructions here and so we're going to start with these instructions um, and, and just follow them and, and that, that will make us very successful here. The first thing you notice in my Word doc is that I have a header here. This is the trickiest part of the whole thing. So what we're going to do, you see this tool right here is a table. We're going to create a table in this document so that we can add our graphic, our image to the, to the header and our title. So we're going to, you'll see this little uh, pop-up box here. We're only going to need one row for the email that I created because I need um, just an image and a title. So I have one row, let me put that back in there, one row, we're going to keep that with two columns, my num knock, there we go. We're going to keep this with two columns so that one column can be used for our image and the second column for our title. And then Cheryl recommends and I just, you know, anything Cheryl says is very valuable and you want to follow her advice. So she recommends then that we set the border size and the cell spacing and the cell padding to zero. So I'm going to click OK. This first is where I want to put my image. You've seen my message right here. So I'm going to want my image to go here. What you have to remember is that this isn't like just a copy and paste, it's actually going to a web image. And so you probably have your um, ACE web files and things that, or graphics that you use for your, for reports and things, but I'm going to show you, you know, Cheryl showed me where in our files, our 
um, iServer folders were, and so I created a folder there for images, and then I put my images here. This is linking to a website, so right here I have my image. And so you'll want to work with, if you don't know where that is, you'll want to work with your web expert to find where that file is for your images. So I am going to copy this URL so that I can add that to my message. I'm going to click on this images icon here and it's going to bring up a pop-up so that I can paste then that URL into that line and click OK and there's my image now in the message. I'm going to play a little bit just like you would with a, an Excel or a table within a Word doc. I'm going to spread this out a little further so I can format the heading the way I want and then I am going to cap get my, my document right here and I am going to copy my header from this document and I'm going to paste it right into that cell and from here then I can use the other formatting tools that are available I think I'll play with the font a little bit and just make this a heading size and that works for me I like you know that the and after my semicolon it moves here and then I think well it might match better if I add some color to it so then you're kind of in your basic um, word tools and I'm just going to make this a, a green color and so when I think I'm happy with that then I'm going to go and grab the rest of my message here and I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to come into this document and I can paste that using one of these clipboard icons. I'm going to paste from Word and it's going to tell me this is going to be based on your browser and so now I've got my, doc, my Word right in here and I can start correcting now. I can say well this isn't my favorite font so I'm going to change that to an Arial font. My signature block is looking a little strange so I can come and do some formatting to make that the way I want it. And I'm going to take a look and I'm going to say yep that's how I want it but one thing I might want to add here is I want to make this a hyperlink because I don't want people to have to search for that and so I will come up here and you can see the little link here I can decide I want to make that a hyperlink and I can go to our website and let's find let's go to aceware.com now Whoops. and I say well our videos are archived right here our webinar archive is here so I want to copy that URL and I want to move it back over did I lose my text here just a minute did I lose my entire oh there we go I'm going to copy the URL here and that has created my hyperlink then and once I feel like I have this the way I want it, this is the, the key, the function key you're going to want to remember, this source key. When you click this, it works its magic. Can you guys see this? Okay, I should make this larger for you. Works its magic and it has taken our message now and generated the HTML. I'm going to want to copy that now. You have this button here that says to select it all. So I've selected that all the text. I'm going to right click to copy it and the next thing I'm going to do then is I want to make sure that this is looking right so I'm going to come into student manager and here's one of the places you can send your message from if it's an individual message and I'm going to use this as a test message I'm going to double click in the email box and then I'm going to do a control V to copy that message take a look at it I'm going to call this my test message and if you wanted to, if you had some eye, other eyes you wanted on it, you could type them in here. Often I send messages to Lori to make sure they're going okay. 
And since I generated a signature within the body of my message, I'm going to check that to re, uh, remove that signature block. And I'm going to send this message. It tells me the message has been sent. And you'll also see in my comments history that I have some test messages that that message has been sent. This comes quicker here. And so here's my message that I'm going to look at and test it to see if it's working OK. And I'm going to say, yep, that looks fine to me. But if it wasn't, I could come back into this HTML, click this button again, and this will revert back to the text format so that you can go through and change these messages how you want. You could, you could change the font. You could change the color. You want to make sure that your hyperlinks are working OK. So I'm going to check that. Yes, that takes me where I want. I want to make sure that the webinar archive link is working. It does work fine here. And so I would say, yes, I am ready to send that. The other places you could send these messages, of course, are I'm going to go to the demo data, is in your courses. If you wanted to send some real specific information on your courses or a conference, like I mentioned earlier, you could go into the course then. And remember, you can send a, a quick email to the class from your quick reports and send a quick email to the class. You can decide if you're going to send them to all or just those registered or specific selected ones. I'm just going to say we're going to do that to all. It's going to send me a list. I'm going to back out of that. And I could copy and I could paste my message right here. So this is the other way that you can do that. Lori, am I doing OK? You're doing no questions well. Your yet? Is good. Everything seems to be going well. OK. OK. The final way, and we're going to do, um, we're going to, I'm going to send all of you, if you were registered at least by 5 PM last night, I imported, of course, all, all of you, and I gave you an interest code of HTML so that I could send you this email that we've been creating together. I could send this to you so you have all of the tips and all of the information we've covered. So I am going to, and I'm going to use to open the demo set to show you this. I'm going to come up, and I, this is going to be a report. I'm using, I want the information from the students that attended this webinar and, and with, with with codes, but since we're doing a mailing and mass emailing, I need the mailing labels for this. So I'm going to check mailing labels. When you're sending a mass email, you want to remember that you'll need to use the additional reports. And if you need all the information, of course, it's in the help guide. But you want to create additional reports. Select OK. What I want is everybody that had the interest code of HTML that I put in there for today. So I'm going to double click on that. You have a drop down of the different interest codes. I'm going to pick HTML and select OK. And I'm wanting to do a mass email. So I'm going to select the mass email launcher for this. It's going to send a list to me of all of the people that were registered and had this interest code. Now, I could print that if I wanted to for future references. But for today, I'm just going to close this, go out the door. So it brings up the mass email wizard. I select Next. This is where I could type in um, a follow-up. can't see what I'm typing here. Follow-up to today's HTML webinar. If I could type, that would help. And um, this is our demo set, so it has Chuck as the sender on this. And what I'm going to say is I'd like to type a message on the fly so that I can copy and paste the HTML message that we created. I say that I'm done. I'm going to check. I am going to, of course, exclude those who say they don't want email. I'm not going to include my email signature, although I could. Um, if you wanted to use this feature, you can. The email in Student Manager, the signature block is one long, long horizontal um, 
line of text and, and I preferred to format that. I could say I want to include the name, so you would have a dear first name there, and it's going to make a CRM entry. Now, since I'm in a demo set, um, it's not going to actually email it, but I am going to um, send you an email from our live system so that you will have that here. But it tells me how many I had. It tells me since it's a demo, it's not going to send. But I do have it set up in our live database so that I can send a summary of our time together. Okay. All right. Now, so we've covered the different ways in Student Manager, either on the names record or in the course or in the mass email. We've talked about, this is the sample here of, that Lori has in the slide of sending it to an individual to talk about their class. So the big reminders for you is to remember that this isn't the tool to use if you're wanting to merge information from the fields that you have in Student Manager. This is a special um, promotional email, a special reminder email of big things that are going on that you want to send to a lot of people. And also, as I mentioned, you want to know where to store your web images. You're not um, pasting an image. I've tried that, and that, that's how I learned that. And test it. Be sure to send it to yourself or to some of your colleagues so you can take a look and everything you've done is working correctly. And that source button that we showed you, that's the magic. That will take it for, to HTML and will take it back to text so that you can work back and forth through that. And, oh, that never place anything in your email before the opening tagline. Let me take a look at that. I should have mentioned that when I was showing the tool. When you create your tool here in your message, let me get to a message and paste this. You don't want to put anything before this section right here. It's set so you don't want to put anything before that. That's another big tip for you. Okay. Questions, comments? I can't wait to see the emails that everybody's going to send. Lori, do you see any <laughs> questions there? Feel free to oh, send them to me few. to practice. Okay. Yeah, I think birthday greetings are going to be just a whole new experience for people. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's another idea. I'm sure there are plenty of them out there. Uh, you said to create a table to place an image. Why do you mm -hmm. have to have a table for the image? <laughs> Is Cheryl on for to answer tech questions? <laughs> uh, I She's not. I don't think so. No. But I, um, I, I'm, I'm going to jump in good. here. And, and if Cheryl, are you there? No. I think the, the idea is that when you create a table at the top, it gives you control over the spacing left and right between your heading on the right and your image on the left. So you have more control. Uh, otherwise, it's like inserting an image in a Word doc. You can put a little padding around the image, but it pretty much is going to flow or it's going to be completely at the top, you know. So it's a, it's a control thing to be able to separate what's on the right from what's on the left. And, and we'll see if Cheryl agrees with me. I don't know this, if she's on. We'll <clears> confirm. <throat> I, don't, I don't hear her on, but she does mention here there's a float property within the email. And she says some email clients don't support that. So you can see on, on her tips page here um, where she mentions that. But I am glad to follow up with her and see if she can give us the real technical example definition and share that with everybody. I don't think we want the real technical definition. I like Chuck's <laughs> explanation. <laughs> well, the uh, other and thing... What kind and of image, go ahead. Go ahead. What, what kind of image file can you use? Okay. When you look here, you can have the um, best for the web are your JPEG and um, these what does JPNG stand for? But um, those are the ones that Cheryl has recommended for the images that the web likes to ha see in the messages. Okay. Well, one um, of the other things, I, Lori, let me jump in. I would, I know Cheryl would would complain about is that if you have an image you want to include in an email, that you try to use a smaller image. If you have a huge a high resolution image that uh, the university uses that's 18 bazillion pixels big by something else, 
even though I think you can size it in the email, I think the answer is if you have a smaller size image, it'll behave better. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna say that and Cheryl that I mean Sharon, you can confirm that with Lori I as well. I will I will do that. And you'll note if you look at these images, they're pretty small. Thirteen kilobyte, seventy four kilobyte you don't have any 1.5 megabyte uh, images, which you can certainly get with a cell phone, you know, these real high-res images, so. Okay. All right, uh, uh, what Lori, else? back at what your else group. What else um, Let's see. These emails can't be used in the email template area. Can I... these emails be used in the email template area? Uh, I think the issue is if you're just doing straight text and you're not trying to merge Aceware data with uh, student manager data with it, that I think you can use it in there. It's when you're trying to combine data and HTML text that it gets to be trickier. So I think that's uh, um, it would be my guess on that. So okay. And I think we had a lot of questions about what type of image and okay. we talked about where to store it. So I'm going down through the questions and, and there seems to be four or five that are very similar. Okay. So. What I do plan to do is I'll, I'll confirm all of the store, the file sizes and file types and things with Cheryl. And before I send this summary email to everybody, I will incorporate her answers so I can um, make those as part of the recommendations before I send my message out to everybody. Yay. File size, well, image types. Oh, yeah, I'll get you on the list, Lori. <laughs> All right. Um, um, any other questions? I think that's about it. OK. OK. Um, let me pull up the, I'm going to pull up the slide, because I think Lori okay. has a slide here for our next webinar, which is next week, the 29th, and that is and on last, Instructor. By the way. And our last, I know, where has last July gone? the July oh webinar series. I know, we're through July. Can you believe it? <laughs> hardly, hardly. So we hope to see everybody there. Lori, I'll let you close things up. We're going to do Instructor Access, and we're going to make sure Cheryl comes this time, because she's going to be our presenter. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so July 29th, same time, same uh, registration that you used for the last four that will get you into yeah. your like instructor as well as a lot of time if you can talk to some of the work for you. So looking forward to that one as well. Excellent job, Sharon. We're going to have Good. you back. Great to see you. <laughs> bravo, bravo. Yes, yeah, stage debut was, um, you know, roses, uh, flowers are in order. Flowers are in order, so. I take chocolate, too. That'll work. There we go. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. All righty, everybody. Have a good day. Bye.